Hi everybody, this is Jim Graham from the Outhousers.com comic reviewer, and this is the weekly chirp vlog right here on the Outhousers YouTube channel. This vlog will mainly focus on comics, but every once in a while if there's something interesting that I want to comment on, you'll hear it right here on the weekly chirp vlog. Now mainly I review comics, so that's mostly what this vlog will entail. And before I start, I gotta let people know that I mainly review Marvel books for the Outhousers.com, so you'll see a lot of Marvel products here on the vlog. I am no way paid or endorsed by Marvel Comics. I just happen to be a fan of that particular company. That's not to say DC, Image, Valiant, Avatar, or any of the other comic book producers out there currently don't produce any good stuff. Just there's only so much that I can read on a limited budget and most of the stuff I like happens to be put out by Marvel currently. But that's not to say I won't review any products made by other companies. But currently this week it's going to be very Marvel heavy and five issues by Marvel I purchased this week and looking at some of those for my reviews we're going to start first with Nova number no. five written by Jeff Loeb with art by Ed McGinnis and here's this issue right here this is Nova number no. five if it, if it didn't ask my voice too much there so looking at Nova number no. five this week this is actually the last issue that will be written by Jeff Loeb and Ed McGinnis so kinda of sad to see this pair go and they did a pretty good job with this run so far and I thought that these two would have a deep run into the series with this being a relaunch of the Nova character with Sam Alexander donning the helmet of Nova and in this issue if you haven't read it already it's the can it's the conclusion of this five-part arc of Sam Alexander learning his powers as Nova after taking over for his apparently presumed missing and or dead father Jesse Alexander who was a member of the Nova Corps more specifically the super supernova corpse as they don the black helmet which some people don't care for. I personally like the black helmet. No offense to Richard Ryder and the gold helmet, but the black helmet's pretty cool. And in this issue, he still continues his battle with Titus, a former member of the Supernovas himself, who has aligned himself with the Chitari forces and their chance to use the ultimate nullifier. And we get to see him battle Titus in this one to determine whether or not the ultimate fighter will ultimate nullifier will go to the Chitari or it will stay with Nova. We also find where Rocket and Gamora have been. Of course Rocket, Raccoon, Gamora have kind of helped been training Sam to learn his powers as Nova and I really like this issue but I think it was a little anticlimactic at the end. For as great as this arc has been and as much as I've enjoyed this series so far, the battle with Titus I think could have been a little better and it kind of was like oh alright well that's how it ended. So I'm hoping this next arc will be pretty interesting because we'll see whether or not that Sam's dad, Jesse, is alive and or dead. And of course, he is still learning how to use his powers as Nova. And with the new writer of Zeb Wells, I'm interested to see where he takes this series from Jeff Loeb. Next issue I bought from Marvel this week was Deadpool number 12 by Brian Posehn and Jerry Duggan. There's the cover there. He's sitting on his throne, uh, kind of looking like the devil there. And we continue in this arc where Deadpool is battling the demon from hell known as Vetus. And it comes to pretty much a conclusion here in issue 12, the second arc of this latest Deadpool series from Marvel now. And I've kind of been hit or miss in terms of my views on this arc. And I really like the Dead Presidents arc. And this arc, has, like I said, has been hit or miss. I thought this issue was pretty cool. You kind of see what Deadpool has been thinking and his whole plan of trying to defeat the demon Vetus. You also see Vetus shapeshift into other heroes from the Marvel Universe, which is pretty cool. So Deadpool's kind of battling uh, some of these other heroes, which is pretty neat. And you also get to see the reappearance of Michael the Necromancer as well as the ghost of Ben Franklin, who I think is pretty comical in this series. So uh, it wraps up this arc, which I said was hit or miss. And unlike Nova, I think this one was a little more climactic. And I did enjoy the ending of this series. And like most Deadpool books, it's 
pretty funny. There's a lot of great one-liners in there, and I think Brian Posehn has done a good job in embodying the comedic element of the character, and hopefully the next arc, I think, will hopefully be a little better. I didn't particularly enjoy this one, and I think the next issue, at least particularly, won't start the next arc, but it should be pretty fun as it's a team-up with the Heroes for Hire, that being the Iron Fist and Power Man, and I think it's going to be back like kind of like a 70s type theme, so that should be a nice kind of one-shot issue for Deadpool number 13 coming up. The next issue I review from Marvel for June the 26th is Daredevil number 27, written by Mark Wade. On the cover, as you can see, Franklin Foggy Nelson is on the cover, and I think it's one of the few issues that Foggy Nelson is featured on the cover. And in this issue, we have the conclusion of Daredevil's battle with Bullseye, and of course, Ikari, and there is even appearance by Lady Bullseye in this issue. And despite last issue, issue 26, revealing to us, the fans, that Bullseye has been the tormentor of Daredevil these past several issues, a lot of people thought, how is this guy a mastermind? He's just known for being an assassin, and a lot of people weren't sure if that was such a great idea to make Bullseye the target, literally the target of Daredevil's oppression. And he even says that despite him not being a mental genius, that when you have a lot of time to think, and that's pretty much all he can do in that comatose, like paralyzed state in that metal coffin, your mind definitely comes up with a lot of creative ideas when that's all you have to do. So when you look at that rationale of Bullseye, coming at this thing here against Daredevil, it does make sense that he would be able to pull off all these different types of acts to really torment the man without fear. So that comes all to a fruition here in issue 27. And like I said, not and a little anticlimactic, but not as anticlimactic as Nova number five with that issue. But again, this issue and this series overall has been great. And specifically this issue, I the battle could have been better <laughs> again, much like Nova. I think the battle could have a little been better because Daredevil kind of gets out from the main area there against Ikari, and then Lady Bullseye jumps in, and then he's able to use his great powers to kind of help take out the building with some latent kind of radiation materials left in the building that kind of blows up and kind of collapses, and that's basically how he defeats Ikari and Lady Bullseye, which. I don't know, I would have liked to see him kind of duke it out a little more with Akari, considering how much of a whooping that Akari put on him, I believe, back in issue 25. So that would have been nice to see, but that's the way it all wraps up. And sometimes you, when you're maybe outgunned or outmanned, in this case, you got to try to take the path of least resistance. And Daredevil did the smart thing and just tried to take out the building, and he was able to survive and take out Akari and Lady Bullseye in the process. The next issue I bought from June the 26th was Hawkeye number 11, written by Matt Fraction with art by David Aja. And this has been probably my favorite series of any Marvel series. And it is no doubt that that is why it's got nominated for a couple of Eisners coming up this year. And this issue in particular is probably one of the most creative issues I think I have read over the past 18 months. And this whole issue, as you can see here on the cover, is from the point of view of Hawkeye's dog, known as Lucky, or AKA Pizza Dog. And it chronicles not only him finding the body of Hawkeye's neighbor Grills, or Gil, however you want to say that, and notifying not only Hawkeye, but the police see it, and then kind of going through Hawkeye dealing with the fallout of that death happening to his neighbor and friend and then at the end of the issue we see Kate Bishop Hawkeye's protege take off for California with Lucky and there's very few words written in this comic as it's all from the perspective of the dog Lucky and it's great I, I've never seen a comic like this I can't say with 100% certainty there hasn't been a comic book issue at least by Marvel that has been primarily pictures and has not featured much words but I'm pretty sure this is probably the first one from a dog's point of view and I think it's an ingenious idea and I can kinda of see maybe why this one was delayed or it took a while to come out but 
because there was a lot more artwork. That's probably why, but very, very creative. And this continues, and this series continues to be a amazing read. And I really enjoyed this issue. And even if you haven't been reading Hawkeye or haven't picked up any of the trade paperbacks, I really recommend just picking up this one just to see the creativeness of this issue. And it may not fill in a lot of the story for you if you haven't been reading Hawkeye, but I think it's a very awesome issue nonetheless. And the final issue I got from Marvel this week of June the 26th is Captain America number 8, written by Rick Remender. And we continue on in this issue with Captain America inside of Dimension Z by Armin Zola. And in this issue, we get to see the continuation of issue 7, which is Captain America going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, so to speak, with his adopted son Ian, the actual son of Zola, who he named Leopold. And we see the brainwashing effects are pretty strong on Ian. And he comes very close to killing his adopted father, Steve Rogers. And we also learn that Zola has found out that his daughter, Jet Black, after encountering Steve Rogers in issue 7, has kind of turned and has started to save the Throx, the natives of Dimension Z, off the super city ship heading now for the actual reality of Earth. And we see Zola at least encounter her. We haven't seen whether or not he stopped his daughter yet, but that probably will come out here in issue 9 next time. And a little bit of a spoiler alert for you, as probably all the issues have been. So in this one, we get to see a brief appearance, and that's kind of what you see on the cover here with the marking Steve and the arm here. We get to see the reappearance of Sharon. And Sharon is Steve Rogers' girlfriend who appears in the very first issue of this volume of Captain America. Just before he steps on the subway train and is transported to Dimension Z, we think Steve Rogers probably won't see Sharon for a very long time. And all of a sudden she pops up here at the end. And it really alludes to, did she know that Rogers was going to be in Dimension Z all along? Or on the outside, was she searching for Steve this whole time and has finally found a way into Dimension Z and is now to save Captain America, Mr. Steve Rogers? So a lot of interesting questions come up. Also, what's going to happen with Ian? Is Zola going to stop Jet Black? Is this ship actually going to make it back to Earth? Or Captain America and now Sharon help stop it and help save Jet Black? A lot of interesting questions here, and we should find out pretty soon here in the next two issues what's going on with Captain America inside this alternate dimension. I think this has been one of the more underrated series in Marvel now and if you really want something different from Captain America it's very different than what Ed Brubaker did during his long and really epic run of the series. It's not so much a army or military or spy type thriller espionage thing this so far has kind of been a sci-fi time travel type thing and it really puts the character of Captain America I think in a different place than really any writer has done Captain America and I think Rick Remender has done a great job so far eight issues in and I'm really excited to see what happens when he does get back to Earth which should be in the next few issues. Alright well thank you for <clears throat> All right, thanks for watching the vlog. Of course, you can go down in the comments, let me know what you think and how I can make this vlog better for you, the watcher out there in the interweb land. And of course, if you want to hear more from me or read more from me on outhousers.com, you can follow me on Twitter at Jim Graham. And of course, check out the outhousers at theouthousers.com. Thank you until next thank you and until next week, thank you for watching the weekly chair vlog right here on the Outhousers YouTube channel.